If you want to see the completely discombobulated, totally random, full of screw-ups version of this training, then by all means, watch the live training. I made a couple of very common mistakes, frankly, uh, when I was setting this up, trying to do this live, and I thought afterwards that maybe I'd just record a new one for you, showing you exactly how to do what I want to teach you. So the whole point of this video is to show you how to do, how to go live from your drone, from your DJI drone, it could be a Spark, Mavic, whatever, I think they're all using the same app, but I'm obviously using the Spark here. How to go live, not just to regular old YouTube live now, but to a scheduled event, because that's a little bit of tricky bit. So first, let me show you the easy part of this. I've already got my drone connected to the app here. As I open the settings, you'll see on the bottom left, there's the general settings. I'm already in that. And then in the middle of the screen there, it says select live broadcast platform. You see Facebook, Weibo, YouTube, QQ Zone, and Custom. If I tap on YouTube, it just takes me to the go live now. And all this is going to do now, if I hit go live, it's going to go live. But where is it going live to? Well, let's take a look at the Mac here. We're looking at our YouTube Creator Studio page. You notice you have two things under live streaming, stream now and events. Stream now is your always open, always ready, ready to go streaming the window, streaming platform, if you will. A lot of apps will access this. It just allows you to go live right now. The problem with this is that no one knows you're about to go live. Until you're live, no one knows that you're live. Whereas you can create a scheduled event and then people know in advance that you're going to go live. They can get a reminder, they get a notification, and then they're ready for your show. So when you start the show, you've got people already waiting for you. That's how I do all of my Photo Joseph's Photo Moments. They're always scheduled in advance. The problem is that the DJI interface does not give you a way to access those scheduled shows. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's go back over here to the Mac again. I'll go to the events page. Once you're in the events page, click on new live event. We'll just call this Drone Live. Give it a time and a day and a description, keywords, etc. We'll skip all that part for now. You do want to make sure that you set your event to public since that is the whole point of this. And also your type needs to be at custom, not at quick. If it's quick, it's just going to go to Google Hangouts. You want it set to custom. You can then go to the advanced settings. And I highly recommend if you're creating this in advance that you set this to promote the channel on your page and you change it from when the event is live to some time before. If you set it to just when the event is live, then you're kind of losing the whole point of this. No one's going to know that you're live until you're live. Also down here under stream optimizations, you can choose between low latency and normal. If you're interacting with your live audience, you probably want low latency, but if you're not going to be interacting, go ahead and set it to normal. There'll be less chance of buffering on their end. And that's it. Click on create event. Once the event is created, you can create a custom thumbnail if you want, but the important part is under here under the ingestion settings. First up, you have to choose a bit rate. I'm going to set this to 720p. Now, as far as I know, the DJI drone will only stream in 720p, at least with this combination. You might be able to get a higher bit rate on other drones. I really just don't know. But whatever it's streaming, that's what you want to set this to. If you set it too high, you could end up uh, with a lot more stuttering if you don't have the bandwidth for it. So it's generally better to go a little bit lower. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to 720p. And then under that, you'll see it says select your encoder. For this, you want to set it to other encoders. And the key information that you need is down here, the stream name and the primary URL. And if you were to look at many other apps that do streaming and have a custom RTMP field, which is what we're going to be doing here, you'll often find two data fields in there. You'll find a place for the URL and a place for the stream key or stream ID, or it'll be named something like that. Those are the two fields that we just saw here. The thing is, in the DJI app, you don't have the two fields. So you have to combine them. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Let's go back to this page for a moment. Before we do anything else, this is a critical part to not forget to do, is to save this event. Because the event is not actually created yet. And if I don't save it, then nothing's going to be able to go live. Go ahead and head on Save Changes. Event is successfully saved. And now we can grab this data. So I need to get this onto my phone. You could obviously just look at the screen and retype it, but I think the easiest thing is to copy this to the clipboard, go over to a notepad, paste that in, come back again, copy the stream name, go over here, and now here's the trick, put the slash, and then paste in that stream key. That is now the full URL that you need to enter into the DJI app. Now I've put it on the notepad so that ideally it's syncing over to my phone. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead over to my notepad in here. Let's go ahead and copy this to the clipboard, back over to the DJI app. And now again, top right corner, now tap on custom. And there's the place where you want to put in the URL. Now this is the URL from the last stream that I did. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of that and just paste over that. And that's the new URL. Now it's ready to go live. I hit start. And in the top left corner, you'll see it says connecting. You get a countdown. And with any luck, in just a couple of moments, it says you're online. So there we are. We are now streaming live. But what are we streaming to? 
Well, we're not actually fully live yet. Now we're streaming to the event, but you have to go back into YouTube now, preview the event, and then actually push it live to the public. So let's take a look at that. Back to the settings here. I'm gonna jump into the live control room for this event. With any luck, it's gonna tell us that our stream status is good. Now I'm recording this in a big metal building, so it probably isn't and it's not, but as long as you are outdoors or somewhere where you have good bandwidth, you will see that as a good stream. So ignore the fact that it says bad. Next, I have to click on preview. It's gonna confirm, do you want a preview? Yes, I do. That'll take a moment to get ready. It tells you right here, we're preparing your live stream. Once the preview is ready, it will say start streaming. Now, my reception here is so bad, you'll notice my phone's gone. I actually just stuck it outside so we can get a better signal. It's still not quite there, but if you are anywhere where you have decent LTE configuration, this is gonna work, no problem. I do this outside all the time. My building is a big metal box, so it really doesn't work out so well here. But it is good enough to go. You'll see it now says start streaming, and it, even though it says my stream status is bad, you'll wanna see that as good. Primarily though, the big thing, you can go down here and hit on the preview button, preview that and see exactly what the stream looks like, and there's, there's my live stream. So there is gonna be an inherent delay between what you're seeing there and, uh, and what the camera's seeing. But other than, other than that, it's ready to go. So now I just click on start streaming and I will actually be live. And that is all there is to it. So again, the key here is to create that live event. Make sure that you set the right encoding settings that you're setting it to 720p and make sure that you save the event. Then copy those two parts of the URL to a clipboard, put them into notepad or whatever, hop over to your iPhone, copy and paste those into that custom RTMP settings and then hit go live on the drone. And then go back over to YouTube preview that stream, and then go live from there. You gotta remember to do those extra steps. If you skip any of those, it's not gonna work. But once you're live, you're live and you're good to go. Last thing, once you're done, you're gonna hit stop streaming on your phone. So that's stopping the stream from the drone to YouTube. But YouTube doesn't know that that's not coming back. It will continue to stream for quite some time before automatically canceling itself out. So you'll want to at that point, once you're actually done, go back and cancel the stream and shut down the stream on YouTube. One of the cool things though, is that if you lose your connection, as long as you reconnect within a few minutes, YouTube will pick it right back up and you'll continue in the same stream. So good luck and happy streaming.